Okay, today we're going to start talking about normal distribution, which is statistics. Now, there's some important vocabulary when it comes to statistics. First of all, this shape is called a bell curve. We're going to use a bell curve when we're talking about percentages over the next few days. This in the center is the mean, and the mean uses the symbol mu, which is kind of like a U with an extra line. Also, we're going to use an O with an extra line for a standard deviation. So this is the symbol for mean. This is the symbol for standard deviation. Now, I'm going to start by giving you an example, and then we'll go back and fill in these notes. So we're going to learn that the standard deviation is based on uh, a certain number so that a certain amount of information fits into our boundaries. Okay, here's what I've been talking about. So if this is my normal curve, okay, my mean is in the center. Now, they say that 68% of your data is in between one step up and one step down from the mean, okay? So this is the mean plus one step. And then this is the mean minus one step, okay? And in order for 68% of your data to fit in between those two boundary lines, the step has to be a certain size, okay? So, for example, if I have a bunch of people who measure their foot size, okay? Let's say I have this as different people's foot size, okay? Now, if this is my mean in the middle of seven, okay, I'm making this up, okay? Now, in order for 68% of the data to be in between these two one step up and one step down, my step should only be about one, okay? Meaning if I took one step up, that was worth one, and one step down, that was worth one, 68% of my data would be between those two numbers. Now, the step is really small if the numbers are close together. Here's another example. Let's say I have these numbers. Okay, now these numbers are much larger apart. We go all the way from 1 to 179. So if I have a center that's right here, my mean, if I only took one step and it's worth 1, that wouldn't get me 68% of my data in between one step up and one step down. Okay, so my borders between one step up and one step down would have to be bigger than 1 because I need 68% of my data to be in between one step up and one step down. Okay, so your standard deviation is the size of your step. So let's talk about a ruler. Okay, if this is my ruler and I'm at six, every step on this ruler is worth one inch. I can go up one, two, three steps. I can go down one, two, three steps. On this side of my ruler, my step, what I'm counting by, is one inch. Okay, now if I flip the ruler around and I used centimeters each step is one centimeter so these are describing two different things if I'm using centimeters I step by one centimeter if I use inches I step by one inch okay now basically your standard deviation is your step size so the farther apart your numbers are the bigger your step has to be so that you cover more of the numbers as you step out and step in because you can only take a certain amount of steps up and down for your bell curve, okay? Now, if that made absolutely no sense, then it'll make more sense as we go along. So, I tried to explain standard deviation. See if I can do it again better on a different day, okay? Standard deviation is your step size, okay? The reason it's your step size is because you are only allowed to take three steps to get to the end of this curve up and three steps down to get to the end of the curve. Okay, so here's what these symbols mean. This is the mean. This is the mean plus one step or standard deviation. This is the mean plus two steps or two standard deviations. This is the mean plus three steps or three standard deviations. 
then going in the other direction. This is the mean minus one step, minus two steps, and minus three steps. A bell curve is created by having your mean in the middle. You're allowed to take three steps up and three steps down. Each step is worth a standard deviation. Now, 68% of your data will fall one standard deviation away, meaning I took one step up and one step down. 95% of my data will fall in between two standard deviations, so I took two steps up and two steps down. Lastly, 99.7% of your data falls in three standard deviations, okay? So I've got one, two, three up, one, two, three down. Basically, 99.7% of the data falls in between those two. Okay, we're going to work with this today and it'll become more clear. So, first let's practice creating the curve. The average test score on a math test was an 83. Average means the mean. The standard deviation was 3. So, if I wanted to create an example of a curve, I would put an 83 in the middle. Okay, the mean always is in the middle. Then, if I wanted to create my steps, I would count by threes because that's my standard deviation. So I'd count up three, up three, up three. And then I'd count down three, down three, down three. Okay? That's how I create my bell curve to start. Every single question that we do, you're going to start by putting your mean in the middle, counting up three times using the standard deviation, and counting down three times using the standard deviation. Okay, next example. Seattle has an average rainfall of 5.2 with a standard deviation of 0 0.7. This time as I count, I'm going to add 0 0.7. I get 5.9 plus 0.7. I get 6.6 .6, and plus 0.7. I get 7.3. Okay, then to go down, I subtract 5.2 minus 0.7, 4.5 minus 0.7, 3.8 minus 0.7 is 3.1. So I started in the middle with my mean, I counted up by 0.7, and I counted down by 0.7. That is how I create my bell curve. You try the last one. Apple claims that the battery of an iPhone lasts 6 hours with a standard deviation of 1.5 hours. So in the middle we put 6, we cut up by 1.5, and we count down by 1.5. Okay, I'm going to check to make sure that I did it right. Three. Four point five, six, seven point five. Good. I just wanted to check my math. Okay, so that's how I create a bell curve. So, in a normal distribution, sixty-eight percent of all the values are within one standard deviation of the mean. Illustrate sixty-eight percent on the given curve. So, if this center is my mean, if I go one step down and one step up. 68% of my data is in this part of my curve, okay? Now, this means that if I lined up all of my numbers for my data and I compiled them into a graph, all of my numbers would be under this bell curve, and 68% of them would fall in between whatever this value was and this value was, okay? If I use the example from above, Let's move this down slightly. Okay, if I said 68% of my data on this graph, it would be between 45 and 7.5, because 7.5 is one standard deviation up and 4.5 is one standard deviation down. So 68% of my data would fall in between 4.5 and 7.5. Now the next one is 95%. 95% is always within two standard deviations. So if this is my mean, I would go two up and two down. 95% of my data would be in between whatever number was right here and whatever number was right there. Okay? 
So 95% of my data would be in between those two numbers, two standard deviations up and two standard deviations down. Okay, again, if you had this example, you get 6.6 .6 and 3.8. I've gone two up and two down. So 95% of my data would go in between 3.8 and 6.6. .6. The last one is 99.7. So 99.7 is within three standard deviations. So if this is my mean, I go three up and three down. So basically everything you can see underneath here would be 99.7%, okay? It says, go back to questions one through three and find 68% is in between what? 95 is in between what? And 99.5 is in between what? So here we go. In question number one, 68% of the data is in between what two numbers? So if I go one standard deviation up and one standard deviation down, 68% would be between 80 and 86. Okay? In number two, 95% of my data would be in between two up and two down. So 95% is in between 3.8 and 6.6. 99.7 for number three would be in between three standard deviations up and three standard deviations down. It would be between 1.5 and 10.5. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those in at the bottom of the list. Sorry, bottom of the page. Okay, so I filled in one for 68, two for 95, three for 99.5. So those are the numbers from above. Okay, now I'm going to flip over my paper. Okay, here's what an example would look like, or here's what a problem would look like. The high temperature in Chicago for the month of August is normally distributed with a mean of six, sorry, 80 degrees and a standard deviation of 8 degrees. So first I have to label my bell curve. I'm going to put an 80 in the middle. I'm going to count up by 8s, and then I'm going to count down by 8s. 60, 80, 90. And 56. Okay. Okay. Once I have my numbers in place, now I'm going to start answering the questions. What percents of days in Chicago in August will have a high temperature between 64 and 96? So, in between 64 and 96, we're going to have 96 and 64. So, counting from my mean, I've gone two steps up and two steps down. If I go two steps in both directions, I'm gonna have 95%, okay? Now remember, 68% is one step in both directions, 95 is two steps in both directions, 99.7 is three steps, okay? So 95% is two steps. What percent is in between 56 and 104? So using the blue this time, 56, 104. From my center, I go 1, 2, 3 up and 1, 2, 3 down. Three steps in both directions would be 99.7%. In what percentage is in between 72 and 80? Okay, so here's where you have to put your thinking cap on. If I am between 72 and 80, I'm just in this region, okay? Now, if I go one step in both directions, I would be at 86%. So if I did both of these areas, I would be at 86%. So if both of those is 86, but I've only gone down one and I haven't gone in both directions, I've done half of my 86. So half of 86 would be 34%. Okay? Again, this whole thing would be 86, but I've only done half. So that piece is only worth 34% because the other 34% is on this side which I haven't counted. So 34% would be in between 72 and 80. Okay? It looks like this is going to run out, so go ahead and start part number two because it's going to take me longer than 15 minutes to explain this.